Okay, well, we have a conceptual uh, issue here. Uh, we're being asked, well, okay, if, what velocity are we using here? Well, we're not using any velocity. We used all this information with velocities and everything to figure out what my drag coefficient is. Remember, we started with the assumption that mass times acceleration is a product of a drag coefficient times velocity and the negative sign because it's opposing motion. Okay? So, using the information that we have, we figured out that the drag coefficient must be this. Well, the drag coefficient is what I multiply by V to get the drag force, right? So now I can find the drag force for any velocity V, okay? Now, any velocity V for which this assumption is valid. And this assumption is only valid if I'm not moving too fast, because if I move really fast, I start creating vortices in the water. Now, I can maybe create little vortices if I'm not moving very fast. But at some point, uh, I, I'm creating enough vortices that that starts changing the assumption that drag is proportional to velocity. And I get into a situation where drag is proportional to the squared velocity, which is the other assumption that we're going to use with this information. Okay? We don't know. I don't know. I don't know at what speed I would go from this to that. Okay? Um, now, there's the relationship. This is just wherever my check is. Um, this just comes from Now this is the net force on me. This is the force I have to exert then to overcome this. And to move at constant velocity, meaning I'm not accelerating. Okay? So, there's this. And now we're trying to find the work in time delta T. And V has nothing to do now with any of the conditions under which I made these observations. Now, gamma does have to do uh, with my assumption of what my initial velocity is, which is based on how high I can jump. Since I don't jump anymore, I'm not sure how high I can jump. <laughs> okay? Now, with video, I could push off the wall, coast, see how far I go and get enough information to get a good estimate of my initial velocity at the ends of my feet leave the ball. Okay? But the point is not so that I can analyze my motion. The point is this is a good example of an application of our basic differential equations, right? And it illustrates any, th any problem involving a drag force. Okay? Uh, any problem involving a drag force in which the drag force is the net force. Okay, so we have this. It implies this to some, some assumptions I didn't as state here, but uh, it's not really an assumption. If this is the net force acting on me, then to move at constant velocity v, this is a force I've got to exert, right? Meaning that if I can find the work done in time delta t, and divide that by delta t, I get the power, because power is work done per unit time. Okay? So, forget any number you've ever been given for v. I can plug any v in here, or I can make a graph of power versus v. All right? Power is now a function of v. Okay? In whatever domain, velocity domain, this assumption happens to be correct. Assuming it's correct for this whole situation, okay?